Welcome to our lecture online. To get a better idea of what a complex number is, let's take a look at it in this graphical way. We're only going to take a look at what i is equal to and then what do we get when we take i squared, i cubed, i to the fourth power, i to the fifth power and so forth. So first of all, let's take a look at the number i, which then could be the imaginary part of a complex number. And notice i is defined as the square root of negative 1. If we now represent a complex number by a vector quantity and we draw it out like this, we can see now that it's pointing from the origin in the imaginary, positive imaginary direction, a unit one away from there. So you can see that it can actually be represented by a vector where this is the length of i and the magnitude of i, I should say, and since it's pointing in the imaginary direction, it's an imaginary number, and therefore the square root of negative 1 is indeed imaginary. But now when we say i squared, that is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. And negative 1 is a real number. Now you can see that it's pointing along the real axis, and in negative the one unit in the negative direction, so this can be represented by a small vector, unit 1, pointing in the negative real direction, and so this is now equal to negative 1. If we now take i cubed, now we can say that's equal to i times i squared, and since i squared is equal to negative 1, we get i times negative 1, which is negative i. And now we have a small vector pointing in the negative imaginary direction, a unit 1 long. If we now multiply i times i times i times i, or i to the fourth power, that is equal to i squared times i squared. And since each i squared is equal to negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 gives us a positive 1. And so i to the fourth power gives us a real number again. And now we have a small unit vector pointing in the positive real axis direction. What do we get when we take i to the fifth power? Well, that's equal to i times i to the fourth. And as we saw here, that i to the fourth is equal to 1, so i to the fifth is the same as i. And again, we have a small unit vector pointing in the positive imaginary direction, just like what we had over here. And now you can see that if you take i to the sixth, i to the seventh, i to the eighth, i to the sixth would look like this, i to the seventh would look like this, i to the eighth would look like this, and so forth, and then i to the ninth, of course, back to this one. So there's a nice, neat representation of what the number i is. Now, what if we have a complex number that looks like this? What if we have, for example, uh, 2 minus 3i? Can we represent that on this axis right here? Well, yes, we can represent it by going, well, first of all, two units in the positive real direction, 1 and 2, and negative 3 units in the negative imaginary direction. So. That would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And so we can have the point where those two come together. And this here could represent a vector representing this complex number. We have three units in the negative imaginary direction and two units in the positive real direction. And so this is the number 2, negative 3i. And so again, you can see that that vectorial representation gives us kind of a good idea of what these complex numbers look like. And so hopefully that helps us understand what complex numbers are. And that's how it's done.